NASA scientists are in place across the path of totality ahead of Monday's eclipse, including at the Dallas Arboretum. There's a lot NASA is hoping to be able to study during totality. Fox News Lori Brown has more. Heliophysics is the study of the sun and everything that it touches. Joe Westlake is NASA's director of heliophysics based in Washington, D.C., but now in Dallas for the total solar eclipse. You wake up every morning, the sun rises from the east, sets in the west, and we sort of take it for granted. That star has a huge impact on our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Westlake explained that every 11 years, the sun's magnetic field flips. Solar wind is much more energetic. It has a bigger impact on our satellites and infrastructure because of that. When we witness the eclipse, for instance, the corona, the atmosphere of the sun is going to be much more twisted and 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 sort of odd to see as compared to what we saw in the 2017 eclipse. There are images NASA plans to capture from the sky. So we have a set of jets that are following the eclipse, both looking at and trying to understand the ionosphere. And for those of us potentially below the clouds, Westlake says there will still be a lot to experience. If you're under dense cloud cover, you will still have the experience of the eclipse. You will still see uh, uh, darkness, right? it will still get colder, things will change, the atmosphere changes, the, the impacts of that are great. We get total eclipses because the alignment of the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun is exact. And it's, and it's an amazing thing. Not every planet gets a total eclipse. And we saw at the Dallas Arboretum, the Sun and Moon have also helped some families align. We are from Boston, some of the families from California, and some from Mexico. At the last eclipse in 2017, I told Rosemary to reserve a spot on her couch because we were coming down. She didn't keep her um, um, spot on the couch for us, so we're at a hotel. <laughs> Our kids got first prize. If there is cloud cover, it may raise the question of if you need your eclipse glasses on or off. One of the key things to think about is, you know, if you look up at the sun, on a normal day, your brain has has the response to say, ouch, that hurts. As you get towards towards totality, towards the shading that happens from totality, that ex that experience, that, that ouch, that hurts, is turned off because it's not nearly as bright, it's not quite as bright, but the UV that comes from the sun is still damaging to your eyes. There is one surefire way to know if you need your glasses during the eclipse. When you look through the glasses and you can't see the sun, that's when you can take your glasses off. And if it is sunny, you'll see uh, the last bit of sunlight come through the valleys of the moon and you see what's called the diamond ring and the topography of the moon is shining through. Really amazing. Yeah, I hope we, I hope to get to experience that. The Dallas Arboretum has been sold out for Monday's eclipse since December, but there are a lot of educational opportunities for kids here Sunday, including a hands on science experiment at the Children's Garden and a meet and greet with a retired NASA astronaut. We put all the details at fox4news.com. In Dallas, Lori Brown, Fox 4 News.